Now our first presenter this morning is Debbie Rose Roba. Debbie's been a Toastmaster for six years. She's a distinguished Toastmaster and has held the roles of Area Director and Division Director. Debbie's currently VP of Geelong Toastmasters, who were District 73 Club of the Year in 2018-19, the same year in which Debbie Rose received the prestigious Peer Award, District 73 Toastmaster of the Year. So to talk about our basic meeting roles, please welcome Debbie. Debbie, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Welcome. Thank you very much, Sue, and what a wonderful introduction. Now, I will be sharing my screen, but before I do that, I just want to let you know that basic meeting roles to me are the ways that we can develop our core listening skills. And they're those things that will acquire where you help helps you to acquire the information. And if you're looking at in a professional or business sense, it will help you to identify or clarify different issues. It will help you to enhance and make informed decisions and even possible conflict resolution. To me, it, these particular basic meeting roles will also help you improve your logical and thinking abilities. And to me, that's a huge big tick on your resume and a huge selling point. So I do encourage you to take on these roles at any given time. And when you become a better team player and take on these roles, you'll also become a better listener and a better leader overall. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Okay, so we've got that up there now. You can all see that. Yep, excellent. Uh, we've got basic meeting roles. Now, to me, the basic meeting roles are going to be the key players, as I've said, in your own personal growth and development. And not only your growth and development, but that of your clubs. And as Sue said, I'm Debbie and I'm the Vice President of Education of Geelong Toastmasters. So the roles that we're going to cover today are going to be what I call the TAG team. And the TAG team is a lovely an acronym and it stands for Timer, R Counter and Grammarian. We're also going to cover a few of the unofficial roles that will add a bit of fun and nuance to your club. The table topics evaluator role. And as I said, these meeting roles are all integral to your Toastmasters experience. They will help you to cultivate your knowledge in the responsibilities of the role, give you a little bit of presentation time because all the roles also involve reporting and feedback. And that's most important at any given time. So we get to practice those little skills in snippets. We'll also go over a bit of the tools of the trade for those roles and some extra hints and tips to add to your Toastmasters bag of tricks. Because as we know, a Toastmaster wears many hats and these are some of the roles that will go towards those. So ding, 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 round one of the tag team. And that's the timer. Now the timer is one role that encompasses time management, obviously. And that's beneficial for many ways because there's nothing worse than attending a meeting that goes over time. Or you've had to wait for a meeting because they've run over time. And we don't want to talk about the doctor's surgery because that's a classic moment of mismanagement of time. So enhancing your time management skills will also go towards your business skills. And that helps you bring in your time bound criteria. So if you've got a project that's due on time, et cetera. So it'll help you to manage those. Now, one of the, in regards to a Toastmasters meeting, when you've got that thinking cap of, you know, I need to make sure my, manage, my time management's going smoothly, you'll need your tools of the trade. And the main tool is going to be your agenda. Well, that's your first primary tool. Now, if you look at the agenda here, down the right hand or down the center column there is the center on my screen, I should say. It's got the time. So when someone's selected a speech, they're gonna have the times. Now, our wonderful timer today, Mandy, 
will be showing you her backgrounds. And she's going to, at the 20 minute mark of my presentation, she's going to be putting up a green flag or a green color and a 25 yellow and red when we get to the end at 30. And in the meeting, it's normally five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes based on those times and whatever your flags are. The second part, or compare it to go with it, is going to be, you're going to need a timing device. Now, you can use it on your phone also. So you could use either the stopwatch or you can also use the Toastmasters Timers app. And that's quite important too, because you can download that from the Toastmasters website. You can use that offline. It doesn't have to be just used in a club uh, scenario. You can use it to practice your speeches to make sure you're falling within time. And a backup, some people will use a stopwatch, especially at the contest level. We need to have two people doing the timing for those. And if you're in a contest and you run over time, you'll be disqualified. If you go under time, you'll be disqualified. The timing is the key thing in a Toastmasters meeting. The next part that is also very useful is to have some form of a script or, as I like to also say, some colour play as well. So located on the Toastmasters website are also the scripts for the majority of roles. And a lot of people don't notice or know that these things are actually on the Toastmasters International website. So you'll have a script it's actually a couple of pages long in total, and this is just an excerpt of it. So it'll give you, if you're your first time timer, it'll explain to you how you can present your timing report back and how to explain your lights and how their options are going. As I said, it's in several parts. And the excerpt here now is just the timer's log related to table topics. So you can write down the name of your table topic person or your candidate, the time that they took, and a yes or no, did they make the rule? So depending on how you're giving your report back at the end of the night, if you're running out of time, you can be very quick and you could just say, our table topics respondents all came in within time. Excellent. Instead of running through, Mary was one minute 26, whatever, and which would be more time consuming. So you can modify that based on your meeting. Lights, camera action. Most clubs, will use a set of standard traffic lights. And this model that's on screen now is the one that we use in our club, the Geelong Club. Now it's double-sided, so that side would face out towards your speaker and you'll be in a pole position. So if you do take up the option to be a timer at a contest level, once you're nicely experienced, you'll get the best position to see all of those speakers. So I, get, I recommend highly becoming a proficient timer. The timing lights will sit out, as I said. Now, the side that faces you as the timer looks like this. So it's got a little dial on it. And when the time comes for your green, you just turn it and the light will shine up on your side. So you can see that it's actually working. And in our case, we've also got a little cheat sheet that's attached to the back of this particular unit. Not all the units come like that. So there's different ways and means that you can do these. You can also hold up A4 sheets of paper. Some clubs have that and you also have a backup because you never know whether your device or your battery is going to fail. And in Mandy's case, we've gone virtual. And on the Toastmasters website, if you're searching for them, do not search for virtual backgrounds for a timer. They are called timer zoom backgrounds. Now in the upper left-hand corner of those backgrounds, Toastmasters have got their lovely logo and they've also written the word green, yellow or red but it's in very small print. And as you'll notice on Mandy's screens, she has made it a lot larger and she's put the text down on there. And you can do that in different ways, depending on your software. Now, as I said, we've got the text and audible devices are next up. So Mandy has kindly put up the text on hers and I've put them on here. But there's a benefit that a lot of people don't realise with that. There are Toastmasters that are colour blind. So having the text imprinted or embedded onto your screen like that will help them because if you're red and green colour blind, such as some of the members of a couple of the clubs in the Geelong region, being online, it doesn't matter what colour you flash up at them, they're not gonna know whether they're on the green, they're on the yellow or on their red. So having the word to enhance it is a huge benefit. 
the next item is to have a bell. Now, the bell can have multiple functions here. It can, well, my favorite function is obviously to ding someone off when it's time and they've gone well over. But you can also use your gavel if you're desperate. But the benefit here is, and I do know, and I have, I'm being a member of multiple clubs, if you have a blind member, they're not, doesn't matter what color it is. As I said, colorblind people can't tell the, the colors. A blind person cannot see the, the lights or things. So you can ding. Can you hear that? Nice little ding when you get to your green. You might, you know, a little bit more when it's the yellow and really let them know when it's at the red. So yes, I have my bell. So ding, 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 stage two. And that's the R counter in our tag team round. Now the R counter will look for wonderful little phrases and things such as, um, ah, uh, and, and all of those little things that detract from your speech. Someone is typing in the background, I can hear them. Thank you or if they could mute themselves, please. The R counter, if you are looking at any of the politicians at the moment, they're stressed, they're flustered. They are putting a lot of ums and ahs into their speeches and their presentations. And it shows that they are stressed, they're flustered. As a Toastmaster, we will really notice that. And if you haven't noticed it before, after this session, you're going to realize when you listen to them, that they are stressed and flustered. And while they know what they're going to be saying, they are detracting. So instead of pausing, they're throwing in the ums and the ahs. And the R counter will listen for those. Now it's not a naming and shaming exercise, but we can say at the end of the meeting, we're giving a report, Sue had a, was excelled tonight. She was our best speaker and had no ums and ahs. But Marlene, she took out the gold prize with too many or the most for the night. You don't have to say there were 47 <laughs> or whatever. So you can put it in, in, a, in a very tactful manner and it's always be about being tactful. Now, on the Toastmasters, you can also download and put onto your portable device a, an R counter app. And you can actually look at it and you can tag. And so you don't have to, while well, you might write someone's name on a piece of paper, because yes, there is a type, there is also an R counter script on the Toastmasters site. You can then count it on the, on your portable device and then transfer it over so that you don't have to sit there and think, oh, okay, tick, 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 tick. You can just be ticking it off on your phone. Round three, the grammarian, one of my favorite roles apart from the timer. And that's the person who helps you to expand your vocabulary, improve your enunciation, your pronunciation and your diction. Now it doesn't mean that you have to be a dictionary because it can be everyday words that can add the excitement to your meeting. It's handy if you theme it towards your meeting night, your word of the night as well, you can have. You can also pick up another grammarian script and log on the Toastmasters site. And my favorite part, as I said, of being a grammarian is choosing the word of the day or the word of the week. Now there are hints and suggestions for that on the Toastmasters site as well, or it could be anything. And if you make it congruent to the theme of your meeting, say your theme was party, party, party. The word might be excitement. Now it sounds like an everyday word. However, if you are like me, believe it or not, I have a little bit of a lisp. So the word excitement and different things, these help me to expand and improve my diction and my vocabulary and my enunciation and pronunciation of different words. So it might only be an everyday word, but it can be beneficial. Or it could be something that adds some 
real, it's a total intrigue to a meeting. Who knows? It's up to you. But you, as a grammarian, get the choice to choose that. This is now, we also have some unofficial roles, and they are unofficial because they do not appear on the Toastmasters website in an official capacity. They do not have a script or anything like that. And they're the fun part of Toastmasters. My God, we have a Harkmaster. Now, the Harkmaster is responsible for just keeping some notes throughout the meeting. Now, at the end of our night, they get a couple of minutes plus some chocolates when we're in the live setting. They'll ask a question. And if you get the question right about that set meeting throughout the evening, you'll get a chocolate. So we'll usually go through about six to eight chocolates. And it could be, what colour was Marlene talking about on the flowers in her garden in her speech? And if you get it correctly, you'll get the chocolate. So it can add a bit of fun and just keeps people listening skills going throughout the whole night. The joke master is another one. Now, a little bit of fun there. Our sergeant at arms has his classic dad joke at the beginning of the meeting. So it's just a little bit of fun and adds a little bit of continuity, you know, like, and people will often give him a few extra jokes along the way. So it just adds a little bit of excitement to the club. Quizmaster is also another one. Now, it could be about the common uh, everyday news in your local area. So it could be items of interest out of the newspaper, but it helps to add, for people who don't normally read the newspaper or anything like that, it'll add a skill and set to their repertoire of reading and listening, but also help to expand their subject matter range. So these things can be really important to the club and to the speakers themselves. Quote of the week is another one. And my favorite, because I attended Werribee Club quite regularly, they'll often have an inspirational thought for the week. And that's something that's really uplifting and inspires them to keep going for the, their meetings. Now they are unofficial. So if you do want to keep a record of them or anything like that throughout the night, you'd have to generate your own forms, but there are a lot of them out there on the internet. A lot of clubs have made their own forms. Now we're going to go into some tips and for table topics evaluations. You're going to be very time poor when you're doing a table topic evaluation. So depending on how many you've been given to do, whether you've got two evaluators or three evaluators and six speakers or four speakers, you are really only going to have 30 to 60 seconds to evaluate someone's presentation. So my key, my number one tip there is don't waste your time repeating the question. More than likely, the Toastmaster is going to introduce you anyway and say, Mary Ann's going to now evaluate NOLA's table topic on keynote speakers. So they've already given all of that information. Skip that. You haven't got the time. And what I would suggest is to just focus on and get a sheet of paper, draw a line down the middle, perhaps put the plus and the minus on each side, just makes it nice and quick for you. And just focus on a couple of little points. Now you might decide what's the impact of their little table topic on you? What was, was there a story involved in it? And did they perhaps paint a word picture? Now this, these are just very basic items. And an example for this is because these things can go on both sides as a positive or a point of improvement. We don't like to say negative because it is a point of improvement. And an example would be, the first example, I went to the beach last Saturday. It doesn't really give a lot of impact, doesn't really give a lot of story, and it really doesn't paint a huge picture in your mind. However, if I said, last Saturday, I drove to the beach, it was beautiful and sunny. When we got there, the golden sand and the beautiful azure sea, we set up our deck chair and our umbrella and the sand between our toes was so inviting. You could use that as more of a positive because if it painted that kind of a picture in your mind, as opposed to the other one, so you can just use that as a slight formula and a hint and tip for taking your table topics evaluations. Another one could be that you're just looking, are the gestures congruent? So in the second 
example, I said I was driving as opposed to I went. And above all, always be sensitive and non-judgmental, non-judgmental about any of your comments that are coming through. Now, table topics and the evaluations in particular is a very concise way of helping you to provide a little bit of brevity or being a little bit more succinct in your presentations and also to expand your critical and analytical thinking processes. And as I said, that's another huge tick on your resume if you're trying to sell yourself in another way. And remember, give it a go because it's a supportive learning environment. And that's everything that we do in Toastmasters, supportive learning environment. Now I've gone over a raft of information today. As I said, the majority of it is on the Toastmasters website. And all of those scripts, etc., that I showed before are all included up there on the meeting roles. And we can get this web link to you, that's fine. And it's wherever you log in on your Toastmasters. They're all there, as I said, but when you Google that particular section, and if you click on any of the light blue ones, it'll bring up those scripts and information sheets for you. Your Vice President of Education is also a wonderful source of knowledge. Your mentor, I believe Marlene will be going into the mentors later on about that. Then we will have your fellow Toastmasters, always a wonderful source of knowledge. And now, we're after some questions, if anyone has any questions. <laughs>